What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, we have another weekly episode of the Glass Nodes Insights weekly newsletter, bringing us all the on-chain analysis that we need to cover from this last week. Let's get into it, but before that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those thousands who have. I appreciate it. Thank you for your loyalty. While you are down there subscribing, which you want to do, turn on the post notifications so you know when the next videos come out, okay? And leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. My one request is to please be civil in your discourse. We can make the world an amazing, beautiful place by just using kindness and compassion in how we speak with each other. We can get any message across with that. Also, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you like. I prefer you smash that thumbs up, but either way, let's do it down in the description as well. There are tons of resources of cool things that I am interested in. Some have referral links, some don't. You make your decisions and let's get into it. Betting on the merge. We all know, maybe you don't, but the Ethereum merge is coming and we're gonna have a look at it. As Bitcoin and Ethereum derivative markets mature, sophisticated trade positions can be established using both options and futures. The Ethereum merge presents an opportunity to observe such market positioning at large scale. The Bitcoin market was relatively quiet this week, consolidating between a high of 23,832 and a low of 22,486. With market conditions still recovering from a fairly, uh, fairly volatile June, there are subtle shifts occurring in positioning with Bitcoin and Ethereum derivatives markets. In this week's newsletter, we will explore a notable divergence which has developed in the futures and options markets centered around the Ethereum merge scheduled for September. Traders appear to be utilizing all options to bet on the ETH price to, into September while futures and options backwardation indicate an expectation to sell the news is in play. It appears to be relatively uh, sophisticated market positioning, adding further evidence of institutional capital being deployed into the maturing liquidity of futures and options markets. Here we can see this last band of the market between the high and the low. The Bitcoin baseline. To start our analysis, we will assess how derivative markets are pricing Bitcoin given there are few protocol level fundamental changes affecting the near term pricing. Since the start of April, Bitcoin futures markets have seen a dramatic increase in open interest, lifting off the baseline of around 350,000 BTC and reaching new heights of 538,000 BTC. Growth is led by a handful of exchanges, primarily Binance, Deribit, OKX, Bybit, FTX, and the CME. Comparing open interest in a BTC denomination helps isolate periods of growth in future leverage from coin price changes. On a USD basis, current open interest is 12.4 billion, which is relatively low and equivalent to the early bull market in January of 2021 and at the uh, $29,000 sell-off lows in June of 2021. Here's a market uh, or a chart of the futures open interest over time. Go take a look at the article for yourself to get a nice clear look at this or pause and look here. Futures trade volume appears to have stabilized in the post-Luna collapse era. Trade volume experienced a structural decline over the 12 months since May 2021 sell-off but appears to be re-establishing a floor at around 33 billion per day. Given the large scale increase in open interest on relative scale, this may indicate that traders are increasingly willing to take on Bitcoin price exposure following the two major capitulation events in May and June. As we can see, the post-capitulation stabilization, 
A structural change has also taken place in futures markets over the last 18 months. The proportion of coin backed margin has declined from 70% to a new normal baseline of around 40% dominance. In other words, approximately 60% of futures margin is now posted via stablecoin and fiat collateral, moving the added volatility brought on by collateral value changes changing alongside the futures contracts. This means while futures leverage is high, the underlying margin appears to be much more stable, reducing the impact of negative convexity in contrast to the early 2021. Futures are pricing Bitcoin in a state of contango, where traders must pay a slight premium to obtain exposure to Bitcoin in the future. This is the more common condition for Bitcoin markets and the premium out to year's end is just 3.24%. This cash and carry yield is only barely competitive with yields available on US treasuries and thus hardly indicative of any long-term bullish bias just yet. A similar level of neutrality can be seen in the perpetual swap funding rates which are slightly positive and yielding 2.3% on an annualized basis. As per the calendar of futures, Slightly positive yield is normal, and the level of funding rates suggests there is a relatively bias, sorry, a relatively little bias in either direction. Overall, Bitcoin futures markets appear to be stabilizing in trade volume and are suggesting a slight bias towards the upside. Open interest is high on the BTC relative bias, however, not so much on a USD basis. This appears to indicate that traders are increasingly willing to take on BTC price exposure but are not betting the farm just yet. Next, we move on to the merge. On the other side of the fence, however, derivatives traders are placing directionally obvious bets for Ethereum. Specifically relating to the upcoming merge planned on September 19th, for the first time in history, Ethereum options open interest at 6.6 .6 billion is now higher than for Bitcoin at 4.8 billion. While not an all-time high yet, ETH options open interest is close to setting a new one, while Bitcoin open interest remains well below the peak at just 35% of the all-time high. Take a look at this chart to understand it even more over time. If we look at the September contracts on Deribit, the directional bias of Ethereum traders is immediately clear. Call options dwarf put options for size, with traders betting on ETH prices upwards of $2.2,000, with significant open interest even out to $5,000. Max paying price, however, is currently around $1.35,000, so $1,350, which would lead to a maximum number of options expiring out of the money. Given this is below the spot price as of today, it sets up for a very interesting month ahead. Here we can look at the different prices of where positions, calls and puts are placed. The large buy side demand for ETH calls options expiring in September has pushed the volatility smile into a state of extreme bullish bias. Overlaid on this chart are open interest bars where it can be seen that the upward slope is driven heavily by traders willing to pay a premium for long call exposure. Implied volatility for this contract is well above 100% at almost all strike prices. The most bullish traders who are buying call options above $5,000 are willing to pay a premium of over 130% implied volatility. If we compare the shape and scale of the September volatility smile to October, we can see a dramatic decline in the right tail with a relatively flat shape and sub 110% IV across the uh, intrinsic value across the curve. This suggests a relatively lower demand for Ethereum exposure via options after the merge event. Interesting, interestingly, post-merge, the left tail is pricing in significantly higher implied volatility, indicating traders are paying a premium for the sell the news put option protection post-merge. Selling the future news. Given the strong bullish bias in ETH options markets, it would be expected that spot demand would be quite strong. However, a look to the exchange net position change shows just about 700 million on net withdrawn per month. While 700 million is a large sum, 
Exchange withdrawals pale in comparison to the recent peaks of 300, uh, 3 billion per month, 300 billion dollars per, sorry, 3 billion dollars per month, and also in comparison to the 6.6 .6 billion in options open interest. Monthly exchange withdrawals today are just 2% the size of futures trade volume, whereas this ratio, ratio reached over 20% in April 2022 and November of 2021. The future term structure for ETH is remarkably different to the Bitcoin curve in shape and is in a condition of backwardation. This means that future traders are pricing ETH at a discount post-merge aligning with the higher premium paid by options traders. While the discount is only small, just 2.27% annualized, it does suggest there is a large degree of short activity in the calendar futures markets. Most probable explanation is that investors are utilizing futures markets to both hedge downside risk and perhaps finance the premiums paid on the options positions. Lastly, we can see that the demand for short calendar futures three month basis is manifesting as a negative cost of carry reaching around minus 3.6% annualized. This confirms that traders are willing to pay a premium for downside production protection with eyes on the merge for both upside speculation into it and a sell the news event after the fact. This demonstrates how traders are placing increasingly sophisticated positions utilizing the growing depth of futures and options markets. This, however, is not reflected as strongly in spot markets, suggesting traders see the merge primarily as an opportunity for price exposure and less so as a case for more fundamental spot positions as of yet. In conclusion, this newsletter, we analyze both futures and options markets to assess what the market is pricing for in the near term. With Bitcoin as a baseline, it suggests that investors are willing to take on more price exposure, but have not yet taken on heavy exposure. There is little directional bias evident in Bitcoin derivatives markets. On the Ethereum side, however, traders are clearly holding a long bias expressed heavily in options contracts centered in September, both futures and options market are in backwardation after September, suggesting traders are expecting to expecting the merge to be a buy the rumor, sell the news style event, and have positioned accordingly. Spot withdrawals for ETH from exchanges are, however, relatively small compared to recent demand peaks. This indicates that sophisticated traders are utilizing the depth of derivatives markets as the preferred instrument to obtain price exposure and hedging risk of the merge event. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments down below. It definitely seems like that. And, you know, it's unseen what's really going to happen after the merge. Is it going to be successful? This is all software, right? Highly interested. Leave your comments below. Smash the like button. And be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when that next video is coming out and follow me on the other socials. Let's get it together. See you later. Peace.